replace the wood boards that weather away. But they are replacing uh, original wet uh, wood boards that were slapped up quickly during the gold rush days. Come all the way up, streetcar friends. So it's very typical to have a cemetery full of the wood boards because uh, men were traveling with strangers and they had one thing on their mind to get to the gold fields. And so, of course, they didn't want to stop and uh, take too much time. Lots of rocks, rocks, and roots. Everybody be careful, huh? They didn't want to take too much time to put up anything fancy. So, uh, vertically. We like to just think of the good ones nicely placed on their feet, the bad ones toppled on their head. <laughs> All right, and they considered the cemetery uh, full in 1908, so they stopped using it in 1908. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone, coming even closer, it's a little chilly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. no. Because this is the moment we've been waiting for. I'm going to show you where that scoundrel is. Yes, the villain. There he lies at the top of the steps. That scoundrel. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you're laughing. <laughs> we don't cry for that guy, right? Do you know what his uh, qualities were? Um, he was, well, king of the con men. He was uh, a murderer. And um, actually, he was a pretty good liar and a cheat. That sounds like my ex-boyfriend in Skagway. <laughs> well, Sophie Smith, he was a con man. I guess uh, Nikki and I, should we tell him? We'll come clean. We're con women. <laughs> yeah, we actually, on this chilly morning, we brought you out here to the Gold Rush Cemetery to let you know that Sophie's not even buried in the cemetery at all. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, you're not laughing at that. Let me explain quickly. If, if you're taking photographs over here, he's buried there. Yes, he's just not buried here. This is consecrated ground and it was set aside for the good citizens of Skagway. Would you want Sophie, this villain, next to your loved ones? So you know what? They solved the problem. They moved the boundary. They put the boundary right here. From that tall cottonwood tree, down these rocks. Oh, excuse me, sir, through your legs. Kind of rude. And there he is. He's been cast adrift for all eternity behind bars where he belongs. <laughs> He's three feet outside of the cemetery boundaries. <laughs> well, folks, there's more to the story. Follow Nikki if you'd like to on the lower road, and I guess I'll take the high road for once. Frontiersman from Oregon had a sick shot on his hip. He was the front guard. And Sophie, where was he? Sitting in uh, Jeff's Jeff, uh, Jeff saloon, his own parlor, putting back shots of red eye whiskey. And then he got good and drunk that he had to lick with courage to grab the Winchester rifle from behind the bar, swung it over his shoulder, and he stomped on down, kind of staggered on down to break up the meeting, right? Drunk as a stump on that red eye whiskey. Frank Reed was a gentleman. He noticed and he recognized Smith staggering down the boardwalk and he offered him a warning. Smith, stop right there. This is a private meeting. You're not welcome. Smith didn't listen. Damn you, Reed. This is a public wharf. And he had the fall to take the rifle off of his shoulder and he swung it like a club. Trying to knock, well, I think he was trying to hit Frank's head and knock him off into the dream. But he missed. And that was enough provocation for Frank Reed to take the sick shot off of his hip. He pointed it, Sophie pulled the trigger, and... No Where? guns, no bullets. <gasps> what? <laughs> what happened here? In a terrible twist of fate, that hammer fell on a faulty cartridge, making this the most dramatic gunfight in Alaska history. Horrible gunfight for Frank Reed so far. In the time it took him to pull back on the hammer, put another round in the chamber, Sophie regained his balance, bringing the rifle back to dead center. He'd seen murder in Frank Reed's eyes and the two men shot at exactly the same time. The villain, oh, a 
the gusher took a shot to the heart. Ugh. He was a lucky one because he died before he hit the dock. Frank Reed, not lucky at all, my friends. He took a barrel blast right to the... Oh! <laughs> no. 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 Oh, are you doing a video? No. <laughs> I do not want to see this on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> he took a barrel blast to the groin. He shattered his pelvis. He died not that day, my friends. He died on the 20th. Can you see? Well, agonizing. Painful days, but ladies, are you seeing the men's faces? <laughs> so he died on the 20th. Uh, well, the men in the meeting, they heard the gunshots, so they rushed out to see what was happening. Sophie had no time to celebrate. Frank Green needs to be rushed off to the hospital. They tore the door off the hospital, off the warehouse. <laughs> they made a make this journey in less than three got to the hospital where we had one. Over 100 years ago, a hospital and a doctor. But to no avail, he passed away. Now the men in the meeting house, they acted quickly. A new, a marshal assigned deputy, Cy Tanner, <coughs> deputized 25 other men right there on the spot because that was 300 gangsters. They were on the loose. They were running for the hills. I haven't seen the hills around here. There's nowhere to go. So that's why we don't worry about crime. Those men were, they surely were rounded up, sent down to justice where they belong. 12 of them already had prices on their heads and all this uh, chaos and all this commotion while they were running around and messing around with that, that kind of thing. Somebody was forgotten. Soapy. Still on the dock in a pool of his own blood for over 24 hours. He was stretched across the causeway. And uh, it wasn't until the next day, those steamships, they rolled in and ladies, oh, can you believe it? They had to step over a dead bloody guy just to get to town. And they went right to the mayor, and the mayor, welcome to Skagway. That was typical. <laughs> that didn't happen to any of you ladies. <laughs> so it took some Christian pity, and it was uh, the Reverend John Sabine who hired a teamster. And they took care of the body. They put it in a wagon. And they brought it out, and three feet outside of the cemetery boundaries, they had the shortest, three to ten of the funeral in all of Skagway's history. Three were there. The Reverend, the Teamster, were two of them, and a mysterious woman dressed in black showed up. Now, the Reverend opened up the good book, and he read in Proverbs, The way of the transgressor is hard. I'm in. Get out of here. That's all I got. Our hero, Frank Reed, a monument 13 feet high. It was not, well, he had 2,000 people attend his funeral. It was definitely a farewell for a hero. On that day, they passed around Casbridge Field with money. They were able to re erect this monument the following spring. And I'll read it for you. And, uh, do bear with me. I do, I do happen to get a little emotional. Choked up at this point. Frank Adry died July 20th, 1898, age 54. That was a fairly old age back then. Men and women were dying from illnesses and uh, other diseases. He gave his life for the honor of Skagway. <laughs> wow, you're la not even a tear for our hero. <laughs> you are all heartless. All right, no, you're just smarter than I look. Um, he was no better than our villain, Sophie Smith. Frank Reed, he was here escaping murder charges. <laughs> Friends, he had murder charges in Sweet Home, Oregon. He had shot a man in the back and put, and, and put self defense your honor for shooting this unarmed man in the back. So we feel like he paid off the judge because he showed up here in Skagway escaping his past, but he tried to turn it around, becoming the town surveyor and engineer. But he did that by stealing the equipment from the real surveyor who'd gone up on the gold trail. <laughs> that real surveyor had left it in a, uh, the saloon. So Frank Reed here, he took the transit out of that saloon and he started laying the streets of Skagway straight and true as they are today, right on top of Captain Moore's legitimate homes at Claymore Valley. Frank Reed, he told everybody, I'm the surveyor and engineer, and he subdivided the lots and he sold them off like they were his own, pocketed the money for himself. Let's sum up our hero here. Frank Reed, a murderer, a thief, 
an imposter. Worst of all, in Alaska, he was a claim jumper. But we forget all that. <laughs> We're going to choose to remember him forever on granite as the hero of Skagway. <laughs> but that's embarrassing, right? But there's a, don't worry, there's a moral to the story. Everybody die on a good day, timing is everything. <laughs> and now you know the rest of the story. Yay! Oh, true story.